The Space Between by Connie underscore VR Chapter 2 On It Better than this, better than that Better watch out when you get me going Oh my god, Izuku Your eye Izuku tried to smile but ended up wincing He rubbed the back of his head awkwardly when he saw the concerned expression on his co-worker's face It's not so bad He said wishing he had worn something other than his All Might t-shirt into the studio today, even though it was casual Friday. The brunette was looking especially cute in her loose autumn blouse and smart pencil skirt, and it was hard to look at her directly. Ew, worse than actually is. Izuku had arrived home the previous night far too late and still high on adrenaline from the show. In the optimistically three hours of sleep he'd gotten before his alarm went off, the elbow he'd taken to the face had manifested in the form of a black eye, ugly and purplish blue against his freckled skin. He'd not known what to do about it so in the end he'd done nothing, resolving to lay low at work and hope for the best. It had sort of worked up until now. Izuku stifled a tired yawn with his hand as he leaned back in his chair, the stamp from the night before still visible on his wrist. The brunette shook her head disapprovingly as she stepped closer to Izuku to examine the damage her low heels clicking on the concrete floor. Izuku, all too aware of the way her carefully styled bob shone prettily in the studio's fluorescent lights, moved his hand to cover his eye. The brunette tsked and put her hands on her hips, her lips pursed in worry. Were you in a fight? She asked, moving her head this way and that to try and see around Izuku's hand. That's not like you at all. Oh god, were you mugged? No, nothing, nothing like, like that. that. Izuku said reassuringly, his face heating up. All he could think about was how very close the brunette was standing to him right now. I'm fine. You don't need to worry about me, Achako. He swiveled back towards his computer to hide his face, willing the heat to recede. His two huge monitors were loaded with a selection of product images that had been chosen for digital enhancement. Um, was there something I could help you with? Yurika Okako worked in the editorial department for The Beat, the same magazine as Izuku. She was an amiable woman and Izuku rather liked her. He glanced at Okako from the corner of his eye, her troubled expression drawing a slow smile out of him. He didn't want to worry her, but at the same time, it was flattering. For the hundredth time since they'd met, Izuku felt grateful that he'd accidentally bumped into her literally bumped into her sending them both sprawling to the ground at the annual company barbecue last year, where he'd been too busy taking photographs to notice that he was encroaching on the young woman's space. The editorial department was generally kept separate from the studio and they may not have ever had a chance to meet otherwise. Now, every once in a while, Okako would visit the warehouse-like studio under some pretense, and when Izuka could get away with it, he'd stop by the connected offices. Okako sighed letting the subject go for the moment. I was wondering if you've seen Kaminari. She said. He's late again. And you know who is about to lose it. Izuka blinked, turning back to her. Is he supposed to be in today? He asked. I haven't seen him. Okako frowned and was about to say something when the offending individual himself entered Izuka's field of vision from behind the brunette, a hefty bag slung over his shoulder. Izuka raised a finger and pointed and Okako whirled on her heel, suddenly glaring and full of fire. Hey, Ochako! Kaminari said with a wink and a smile that he probably thought was suave. He was dressed in black and white name brown sportswear, his straw-colored hair dyed with an irregular streak of black that Izuka imagined must be held to maintain. Don't you hate me, Denki? Okako retorted, trying very hard to look ferocious despite her short stature. You were supposed to be here half an hour ago. Kaminari shrugged the accusation off with a smile. Was I? He said mildly. Oh, didn't realize it was that late. I'll- Kaminari's eyes drifted over to Izuku, who was watching the exchange with some interest. They widened as they fell on his black eye. You went! He shouted with glee, grinning broadly. Okako turned just in time to see Izuku smile meekly. He went where? She demanded, looking back and forth between the two of them. I swear, ah, uh, never mind. She threw her hands up in the air. I don't have time for this right now. Dinky, you're coming with me. 
she stalked over to the freelancer and grabbed him by the back of his shirt, dragging him towards the studio exit as he made protesting noises. Don't think this is over. Okako called back over her shoulder, pointing at Izuku. You're going to tell me everything later, so don't even try to get out of it. As the studio door slammed shut, Izuku chuckled quietly, glad he wasn't the subject of Okako's wrath. The brunette was normally a sweet girl with a calm disposition, but if you got on her bad side, she could be a force to be reckoned with. Finally free from distraction, Izuku rubbed his palm into his good eye. He glanced around the several thousand square foot studio, divided into various sets and partitions and working arrangements. Two of the other photographers whose workstations were near his were busy shooting at the far end and a third was off-site today. It was a quiet day save for the occasional sound of footsteps and the muted snapping of cameras, but the silence didn't help him any. Izuku's attention was shot. He was exhausted and his entire body ached. Izuku rubbed at the tender spot on his back where he'd been headbutted and groaned. To top it all off, the images he was currently working on were no comparison to the photos he really wanted to be finessing. But Midoriya Izuku was an excellent employee, damn it, and an excellent employee recognized that work hours were for working. And possibly for transferring photos to his computer. And maybe for scrolling through them 18 times, trying to figure out which were the best ones and perhaps for daydreaming about what he could do to make them as sharp as possible. And in doing so, just maybe impressing a certain band and its aggressive blonde frontman. Izuku shook his head and set his thoughts aside, picking up his coffee mug only to discover that it was empty again. He normally wasn't much of a coffee drinker, but he needed it today. Setting the mug down, he reluctantly turned back to his actual work, enhancing a series of images of vibrant nail polishes their contents splattered artistically courtesy of the props department. He'd shot these the week before and his supervisor had taken forever to get back to him. Izuku had been dreading a reshoot. The Beat was a mid-size monthly magazine that covered topics relating to fashion, music and local events. When Izuku had graduated college nearly three years ago, he had held big dreams for his career. He had completed his studies near the top of his class and was well liked by his professors but the job market had been poor. Izuku had spent six months obsessively applying to the best jobs, then the interesting jobs, then literally every job within his field before he'd finally been called back by one of his more desperate applications. When he was offered the position, he determined to make the best of it, not wanting to burden his mother any further with his unemployment. Hoping he'd start off in the magazine's events section and build his career from there, Izuku had been disappointed when he found himself relegated to the fashion pages. Still he'd remained hopeful that he'd be able to worm his way into the other areas with time. Yet despite his overwhelmingly cheerful demeanor, relentless hard work and willingness to take on extra assignments and stay late, his boss had been less than receptive. Instead she'd proven to be quite territorial, not wanting to share him with other departments even when Izuku offered to work events without pay. It had been almost two years since then, and Izuku was still in the same position as he'd been when he first started. Incredibly frustrated, Izuku had begun to wonder if he should have just gone for it as a freelance photographer like Kaminari had, even if it meant no job security and sleepless nights for himself and, more importantly, for his mother. It was these thoughts that had provoked Izuku to confide in Kaminari the day before. They'd ended up chatting and Kaminari had suggested that Izuku take on events unrelated to work in his free time. It had been a rare stroke of brilliance from the blonde. Izuku had possibly been a little over-enthusiastic about the idea, which may or may not have led to Kaminari hinting at a cool, off-the-road show at a hip bar that should be good practice, a mischievous smile plastered to his face. An hour or so into his work, Izuku's focus had once again wavered. Without really thinking about it, he opened a new tab in his browser. The anti-heroes were easy enough to find, and Izuku felt a thrill over having spoken to them when he saw the over 12,000 likes and nearly 4,000 followers on their respective accounts. They must be fairly popular, he realized. Izuku's photography account, by comparison, only had a few hundred followers that largely consisted of friends, old classmates, and vague acquaintances. As he scrolled through their posts, Izuku noticed that the photos the band posted were mainly promotional shots, 
and the majority of concert images that he found were fan-posted or tagged. They primarily consisted of distorted video and images of questionable quality, many of them blurry from what Izuku assumed was the sheer intensity of their shows. There didn't seem to be many fans with professional equipment. Izuku grinned, seeing a way in. Scrolling further back through fan posts six months, in fact Izuku stumbled across an image of Ground Zero throwing a drink into a fan's face from the stage of a venue. Laughing in a combination of horror and amusement, Izuku clicked over to the group's profile details. While he couldn't find anything regarding any of the band members' names, he did learn that they had released a new album, their third, a few weeks prior, and that their first had been released nearly four years ago. They didn't appear to be signed to any label. They made a band out of you, huh? Kaminari said from over Izuku's shoulder, and Izuku just barely managed to suppress a yelp as he leapt out of his chair. K kaminari he exclaimed, ashamed over having been caught while being less than productive. How long have you been standing there? Kaminari shrugged and smiled. Don't worry about it, he said, patting Izuku's shoulder. I don't think anyone hears about questioning your work ethic. He pulled up a chair from a nearby workstation and slid it over next to Izuku's desk as Izuku sat down again. So, how was it? He asked with a grin. It was... Insane, Izuku said, finding it the most apt description. I wish you had warned me. Kaminari laughed. I thought it'd be more fun for you that way, he said, nudging Izuku with an elbow in camaraderie. I thought I was going to die, but you didn't. And as far as I know, no one's ever died. As far as you know? Kaminari clapped his hands together. Forget that, he said. You brought your camera, right? I see what you got. Izuku paused, glancing around the studio to make sure the coast was clear, then clicked on a minimized window on his screens. He passed over a couple of his favorites expectantly, and Kaminari grinned. It's been a while since I photographed for them, he said. I can't believe you got so close. Those mosh pits are deadly. It was kind of an accident, Izuku said. Well, Whatever works. Kaminari replied. You should definitely spam them your finals. Kirishima and Amina will be over the moon. Don't think anyone's gotten high quality photos since their latest release. It took Izuku a moment to process all this. Wait. You know them? He asked, his eyebrows rising to his hairline. Kaminari immediately straightened out, a self-satisfied smirk on his face. We all went to high school together, he said in a bragging tone. Kirishima, er, Red Riot, he's one of my best buddies. Izuku tried very hard not to let his inner fanboy show. What about the other two? Kaminari grinned and winked. Uh, I mean, it's great. If that's who you're asking about, we're friends. Bakugo is, well, Bakugo. Izuka considered this. Mina is... Pinky? Yep, you got it. So that meant Bakuga was ground zero. Kaminari's easy answers made Izuka want to ask a hundred more questions, but Okako suddenly popped up behind them. Izuka really had to get better at this whole sneaking around thing. The brunette said nothing as she leaned over Izuka's shoulder, looking at the photograph on screen of Bakuga mid -yell. Did you take that? She asked curiously. Yeah. Izuku admitted. She wrinkled her nose. He, he looks scary. She said, eyeing Izuku. Is he the one who punched you? Kaminari's eyes widened as the realization struck him. Wait, Bakugo punch you? Wait, no. Izuku looked at Kaminari with grave concern. I thought you knew him. Does he really go around punching people? It won't be the first time. Kaminari said, grimacing. Guys get a temper like you got freckles. Izuka was about to respond when Okako suddenly reached over, grabbed a notepad from Izuka's desk, and furiously began whacking Kaminari with it. Where are you taking poor Izuku? She demanded between smacks as Kaminari cowered, raising his hands above his head to protect himself. You're a terrible influence on him. I didn't take him anywhere. Kaminari protested. 
he stood and bolted to the opposite side of the workstation. He just asked me about some local events worth photographing. So you suggested that. He has a black eye. I see. I see. Izuku, not entirely understanding what was going on, cleared his throat awkwardly. It's, it's fine. It's fine, Chaco. He said, trying to mediate the situation. I had a lot of fun, and it was a good practice. Okako huffed and set the notebook down. She folded her arms across her chest. There are lots of other events he could recommend it, she said. She glared at Kaminari and he flinched away from her. Casting a sideways glance at Izuku, her gaze softened. Who punched you then? No one, Izuku said. I got elbowed in the face by accident. Okako stared at Izuku for a long moment, and he shifted uncomfortably under her gaze. Fine, she said, relaxing. A moment later she turned back to Kaminari. I'm watching, she said suspiciously, and Kaminari nodded, cowed. To Izuku she said, I have to get back to work. Don't let Denki trick into any more weird events. Kaminari didn't even protest, because it was technically true. After Okako left, Kaminari let out a breath, then started to laugh. She's got it bad, huh? He said, looking at Izuku knowingly. Damn, was kind of hoping I have a chance. Ah oh, well, I'll be a good sport and root for you anyways. Izuku, turning red as a tomato, opened his mouth and found nothing to say. Kaminari stuck around for a while after that, helping Izuku select photographs. Izuku hadn't photographed too many events since graduating, so it was nice to get feedback from someone who did them on the regular. Plus Kaminari seemed close with the band, so he probably had a good sense of what they liked. Izuku would have liked to extend the conversation, but one of the other photographers had returned while they were finishing up and Izuku had been forced to close the files. Izuku spent the last few hours of his workday completing the product images he'd been assigned. Talking to Kaminari had gotten him excited all over again though, and his mind was worrying. As his co-workers left for the night, Izuku bid them goodbye, only semi-aware of his heel tapping impatiently on the floor. By 5 p.m., the studio was mostly clear. Izuku got up to grab a third coffee, then returned to his workstation and put on some quiet background music. Looking around a final time, Izuku grinned to himself. Don't make us wait too long, Kiri's Hima had said. How was 24 hours? Izuku cracked his knuckles and got to work. With Kaminari's help, he'd chosen about a dozen photographs for finishing, and it was these that he focused on. He borrowed some of the techniques that he could discern from the band's promotional shots as he enhanced, sharpened, adjusted, smoothed, and so forth. Izuku barely noticed as the studio darkened around its corners, stopping to turn on a desk lamp only when the glare from the monitors became too unbearable. Izuku made the decision to leave the band members themselves alone for the most part. They didn't seem like the type that'd appreciate being airbrushed, and it didn't really suit a punk band anyways. He did, however, brighten their eyes, bring out the colors of Mina's outfit as well as the stage lights, subtly darken blacks, and enhance the trickles of sweat on the frontman, Bakugu. It was easy when it already patterned down his arms and the sides of his face, and Izuku thought that it actually looked pretty cool, maybe even a bit dirty. Dirty was punk, right? He slapped a hand over his mouth when he realized he was muttering. Roughly two and a half coffees later, Izuku was satisfied with the majority of his photographs. He narrowed his finals again and selected the ten that he thought were strongest, giving them one final look over. He checked his watch, it was just past midnight. He'd skipped right over dinner without even realizing it, though now that he had, his stomach twisted painfully, wanting to be fed. Izuku ran a shaky hand through his damp hairline. He couldn't tell if he was tired anymore, five coffees were five more than he usually had and he was pretty wired. Izuku took his wallet from his back pocket and pulled out the card he'd been given the previous night. He looked at it, then back at the screen, then at the card again. Were his photos good enough? He flipped the card, tapping the edge of it along the desk, thinking. 
it felt like he had been given some kind of secret password, a code that would unlock another world. He felt pride in obtaining it at all. Izuku held the card up to his desk light, the edges glowing like an eclipse. A new beginning. His heart racing, Izuku set the card down and transferred his photographs to a file sharing service. Once he had the access link, he opened his personal email. Checking three times to make sure he'd written the address correctly, Izuku sent a brief but enthusiastic message, reintroducing himself and providing the link as well as his contact information and social media channels. After agonizing over its tone and making small adjustments for several minutes, Izuku put his foot down. Ah! He cried out as he hit send, throwing himself back in his chair so hard it nearly tipped over. It was done. Izuku sat there for several minutes, collecting himself and attempting to slow the nervous and caffeinated racing of his heart. He transferred the finals to his flash drive, pocketing it before unhooking his camera and getting his things to leave for the night. Locking the studio and making sure to turn off the lights behind him, Izuku hefted his camera bag over his shoulder and set out. It was dark, though stars twinkled dimly behind the haze of city lights. There were worse ways to spend a Friday night, Izuku supposed. Besides, he felt proud of what he'd accomplished. Izuku stopped to grab takeout before he hopped on the bus to get home. He didn't bother to wait, inhaling the contents of special number two well before he got off the first bus and transferred to the second. It was a 45-minute trip back to his apartment, and Izuku spent most of it alternating between trying to maintain consciousness and trying not to twitch so hard he fell out of his seat. Arriving at his apartment, Izuku took the elevator to the 14th floor, smiling when he saw the post-it note pressed to his door. Plans this weekend? Izuku didn't understand why his friend and neighbor preferred this to texting, but Izuku had long ago accepted it as one of the guy's quirks. He peeled the note off the door before unlocking it and stepping inside his bachelor apartment. After drinking what must have been a liter of water, Izuku stripped off his clothes down to his boxers, grabbed his phone and trudged over to his bed, falling face first onto the soft sheets. Izuku groaned loudly in approval, already relaxing into the mattress. As he rolled over to plug in his phone, he noticed he had a new notification, an email. Figuring it was probably spam, he went to delete it, only to freeze. He recognized the email and was shocked that the band had replied so fast. Was it Kiri's Hima? Biting his lip, he opened the message. We'll pass them on. Jeezy. It didn't take Izuku more than a second to figure out the initials, and his stomach twisted. Did that mean that Bakugo took care of all the band's emails, or was he just the one who happened to check the account at that time? The idea that the contact information that Izuku possessed might actually be a direct line to the blonde made him far more excited than he wanted to admit. He puzzled over the message though. Pass them on? To who? The other band members? Izuku couldn't think of anything to say to such a short message, so after staring at it for a solid ten minutes, he reluctantly set his phone aside, deciding to just wait and see what happened. He plugged his phone in and set it on his small bedside table, rolling over to face the wall and woke up to the angry sounds of street traffic and bright light filtering through the window. Izuku squinted and moaned, burying his face in his pillow. How was it already daylight? He'd barely blinked. Raising his head, he rubbed his eyes and immediately withdrew his hands, hissing, his black eye stinging furiously from the pressure. The pain brought him to some level of wakefulness, and Izuku rolled over and stretched. He'd fallen asleep on top of his bed sheets. Again. Making a series of soft whining noises, he checked his phone blearily, jolting upright when he noticed that a, it was past noon and b, his phone was lit up with all manner of notifications. Izuku opened his social media accounts and did a double take when he saw the over 60 new followers, countless likes, and three direct messages from fans of the anti-heroes asking if he'd taken more pictures with varying degrees of enthusiasm. Izuku hadn't known what he expected to happen, but he knew what he'd hoped. Grinning from ear to ear, he raced to the band's page, shouting in glee when he saw that they had posted not just one or two, but eight of the ten photographs he'd sent them all credited to Izuku and his social media channels. It looked like they were posted at some point overnight, and had already garnered several hundred likes and a train of comments from fans. 
It was the most attention Izuka's photography had gotten all year. Trying very hard not to weep with joy, Izuka left an emotional comment thanking the band. Wiping his good eye, he buried his face in his hands and allowed himself a moment just to be happy. After two years of constant frustration and disappointment, this felt too amazing for words. Finally standing up and stretching, Izuka practically skipped to the bathroom then over to his desk. By the time he returned to his phone he had an additional notification, a friend request from one carries him a Ajiru. It took Izuka exactly one second to accept it, and not long after he received a private message. You made us look so cool. Izuka grinned delightedly over the words. I'm really glad you like them. Thank you so much for posting them. Thank Pinky. She called me screaming in the middle of the night. She was totally freaking out, bro. Then, after a moment. If you keep talking stuff like this, we're going to have to start paying you. Don't tell Brown Sir I said that. He'll kill me. Izuku, overwhelmed, didn't know what to do other than stand there and smile stupidly. The messages just kept coming. He could feel the redhead's excitement through the phone. Izuka was about to reply when another series of messages appeared. The words made Izuka's heart leap to his throat. Hey man, you say you wanted to do more stuff like this, right? What are you doing next Tuesday? 